All right. So without further ado, it gives me great pleasure to introduce this talk this evening on implementing the midwifery model of care. I'm delighted to introduce Dr. Michelle Telfer, who is an assistant professor at Yale School of Nursing, where she teaches and practices full scope midwifery. Dr. Telfer's research includes reducing unnecessary cesarean sections, supporting physiologic birth, exercise in pregnancy, and global maternal and newborn health. Her recent work includes establishing a partnership with Yale Makerere University in Uganda and Mother Health International that includes a National Institute for Health grant funding for collaborative, collaborative learning, research, and clinical practice. Speaking with Dr. Telfer as her co-presenter is Dr. Joan Komalik. She's an experienced clinical midwife, currently employed as an advanced women's health research fellow in the VA Veterans Health Administration in the United States. She also holds a joint appointment as assistant clinical faculty at Yale School of Nursing. Her academic training includes a PhD and MPH from New York University. Her MSN CNM was granted by Yale University and she has worked in full scope midwifery practice since completing her clinical training. Her research focuses on maternal outcomes, the midwifery model of care and developing reproductive health services for women with mental health, comorbidities and exposure to trauma. We're so very glad to welcome you here and I'm going to share the microphone with Dr. Telfer. Great, thank you so much, Jane, for the lovely introductions. And we're so excited to be here tonight. And it's an ama amazing to see people from all over the globe. Um, I'm really looking forward to sharing the work that we've been doing and hearing, um, and most interested in really hearing your responses at the end of this. Um, so I hope you'll have lots of questions and, and feedback to offer us. Um, so I wanted to start by giving a few uh, uh, thanks uh, because we could not have done this alone. And first and foremost is to Dr. Holly Kennedy, uh, who is our kind of lead on this research and our mentor. Um, and so I want to give her, her that. Uh, and also to thank the Yale School of Nursing and the Goldsmith Foundation that provided some funding for us. Um, and we've also had support in the course that Joan is going to be talking about from the Yale University Porvoo Center for Teaching and Learning. And that course also features videos from the Global Health Media Project. So before we get to the larger course that Joan's going to talk about, I wanted to give a little bit of historical perspective for how this course even came about. And it's been about three years that um, I was invited to, to um, develop a collaboration uh, and it's a bi-directional partnership between Macquarie University, their Department of Nursing, and Yale University's uh, School of Nursing. And we were really building on a, kind of a more than 10-year relationship that Macquarie and Yale had developed through the School of Medicine. And they had had such good success with their partnership that they invited the Schools of Nursing to join in. And so we began um, began that partnership. And through that, we started to look around at what sort of these, like a really good quality midwifery model of care would be, whether it's here in the US or in Uganda. And we came across, um, through some connections of, of colleagues, a model in the nor in northern Uganda in a town called Atiak. Uh, and it's run, it was developed uh, by Dr. Rachel Zaslo through Mother Health International. Um, and it's called that Nwalmi Puch um, Birth Center, and that means the House of Birth and Peace. And their model there, I want to spend just a moment to talk about it, um, but um, Dr. Zazo, that's really her research and work, but what we found was that it's a really well um, integrated uh, birth center with a community of traditional midwives as partners in the birth center. And they're part of the care team, which is led by Uganda nurse midwives. And by partnering with the community and respecting the knowledge of not only the community and traditional midwives, but also respecting the knowledge of the women within the community and what their unique culturally specific needs may be, the birth center really has become a trusted community resource. And it's um, partly community owned. And it's really a 
beautiful midwifery model of care that addresses the three delays that many of you may be familiar with. Um, and their outcomes are phenomenal and it really shows that this model of care that um, it works. Uh, they've had no maternal deaths in over 12 years and over 10,000 births and their neonatal mortality rate is better not only than the rest of Uganda but it's better than for a black woman in the giving birth in New York City here in the U.S. So their outcomes kind of speak for themselves. But we um, were able to forge a partnership um, with Makareri and Mother Health International. And part of that um, we'll talk about now, forward. So um, this is an image, this is Dr. Rachel Zasso on the left, uh, Dr. Rose Nabirye, who was at the time the Dean of the Health School of Health Sciences at Makareri, and she's also a midwife, um, Holly Kennedy and myself. And so part of the aims of our collaboration were to establish collaborative midwifery educational and research, um, and to develop a collaborative curriculum that involves um, our students as well as Makareri midwifery students at the birth center. And we've actually started to expand that into our obstetrician residents and obstetric faculty as well. Um, and then to develop sort of a wide reaching online educational course that would disseminate the midwifery model of care based on the Lancet series on midwifery and the model that we saw at the birth center. So to kind of talk a little bit about what that looks like for for learning for students. And I know we have some students on here, which is wonderful because I think it's really hard as a student to go out into practice and to practice something that you may not have actually had firsthand knowledge of. Many of us get experience in very high level, very busy tertiary care facilities, and we don't always get to see this, this model in, in real life. Um, and so we wanted to see what it would be like for our students and Makareri students to be able to see this. So we had some of our students uh, went last summer and they were prepared by a 14 week seminar uh, that kind of gave them training in cultural humility, ethics, tropical medicine, um, things that they don't usually get in the training here in the US, which is the helping babies breathe and helping mothers survive, breach birth. Um, and so they were essentially there, they were there for six weeks and learning from the Ugandan midwives and the traditional midwives under some supervision with myself and another faculty member um, and the director of the birth center uh, so that we were making sure we weren't causing an undue burden to the health system there or displacing students in Uganda as well. Um, and so they were able to see this model and work. Um, and one of the things we were working on is trying to see if through research, whether we can make this model transferable to other settings. Um, and even here in the US, we're working to sort of develop a similar kind of community engaged model within our larger health system. So for the online course that we, was the pilot course, um, we developed this with the Macquarie faculty um, and with Mother Health International. And it was really to disseminate information and evidence that was supporting the midwifery model of care to provide a no cost or low cost access to comprehensive evidence based research and to foster global connections and conversation between midwives and other women's health providers. Um, we wanted to foster interdisciplinary community between the midwives, obstetricians and, and student learners and to provide tools to advocate for and implement change in their own settings. And at the end of the course, it was at the end of this 14 week course was the Yale certification as a specialty credential. So as I said, we developed this with Makarari and Mother Health International um, and it was built around the Lancet series and uh, it was 14 weeks long. And this actually piloted um, in September of last year. Uh, and this is a picture of actually most of the faculty here um, and some of the students, uh, we all happened to meet up at the International Confederation of Midwives meeting in um, Namibia last fall, just as the course was getting started. So that was really nice to actually meet in person. Uh, it was hosted on the Canvas platform uh, and that's what Yale uses. Uh, and there were weekly readings um, sort of from the latest evidence-based practice um, and based on the Lancet series as well as other of formative uh, 
landmark studies. And there are, the assignments were designed for the learners to apply the readings kind of in their own settings. So not just taking the readings and getting the information, but actually applying it within the, the healthcare setting that they were either working in or as students um, were being precepted in. And there were discussion board postings and that helped to foster collaborative learning and processing. Um, and then there are five synchronous learning sessions. And we had six faculty um, in the first course and there are about 18 students initially. <clears throat> so it was a high faculty to student ratio, but for the pilot, we really wanted to have um, an Ugandan faculty paired with one of our faculty so that we could sort of learn and collaborate as well. Um, and it was a pass fail, fail course. Um, and some of the challenges that we encountered with this initial course was really kind of learning this new platform. Um, and there were challenges really for connectivity and for access to data from our colleagues that were in Uganda. And some of the students were uh, master students that had been through Makarari and were back in Rwanda where they work as midwives. Um, so they had some challenges um, in just being able to connect. And then we had also challenges with navigating the time differences um, around geography, with the different time zones, and also people's work schedules, right? Because we're all still midwives or student midwives, and everybody had different days of different shifts. Um, another challenge we found was only being able to use open access publications. Um, and this is because many journals really charge an exorbitant fee to, to be able to share the articles. And while Yale faculty had access um, to those articles. It wasn't as easy for other students to be able to get those and to download them. And then cost and sustainability. So some of the things that we did learn that were very positive from this um, was the active discussion board postings. And this is where the students really engaged with one another as well as faculty and could really learn across the different settings between the US, Uganda and Rwanda. Um, the synchronous learning was challenging, but it was also really lovely to be able to see people's faces and to talk and to see people in their work settings um, over Zoom, which I think a lot of us are getting a lot of experience more than we ever probably wanted um, with these days of being in lockdown. Um, and the new knowledge that was gained around the midwifery model of care and best practices was another highlight. And really for everybody feeling connected and feeling empowered, which I think is something we're all getting from this virtual international day of the midwife. So just briefly, some of the outcomes. Um, it helped, this is from the students and faculty, the course helped me think about enacting change in my own work and setting and 67% strongly agreed with that. They felt connected to a broader community of midwives and other professionals involved in maternal and newborn care. Um, again, 67% strongly agreed. And again, 67% um, agreed that the course gave practical tools to help make changes in their own work or educational environment. Um, and everybody felt that uh, administrators and policymakers would be interested in such a course. And that really kind of leads up to Joan's talk, which will be uh, um, coming right up, uh, just to give you some of the quotes from some of our some of the learners. Um, that they learned what is right for one woman is not right for the other, and staff shortages should not compromise maternity care that women should receive. Women have the right to make decisions about the maternity care they receive. The course broadened my understanding of maternal and child health indicators, reading, and interpretation of data. In addition, it enlightened me about how maternal and child health can be improved. It also gave me good insight into team building and collaborative care, which is key to the attainment of the goals and objectives of an organization. And above all, the course reminded me of the need to strengthen respectful maternity care in every facility globally in order to foster a change of attitudes among midwives and to improve the experiences of women while seeking maternity services. So without... Um, Further ado, I'll uh, let Jane come in and, and tell you about the course that has kind of grown out of this that we hope to offer um, by the end of the year to everybody. Thank you. Great, thanks, Michelle. Um, so my name is Joan Kambelik, and I want to have a special shout out to our attendant who's from the state of Iowa because that's where I'm from. So hello to you, and I'm glad that to see. It's really exciting to be here. I had no idea there would be so many people from all over the world. Very exciting. 
Um, and so that's exactly the sort of, I think, enthusiasm and, um, and audience that we wanted to capture with this course after we had the pilot, which was intensive and deep and kind of a more traditional didactic style. Um, we had the opportunity to, to broaden it and the challenge really to widen the audience um, to something that, a course that was designed primarily for, for, for clinicians to something that could reach policymakers and administrators, activists, um, and consumers. So um, we decided to construct this um, massive online open course, if everybody knows that, um, that acronym MOOC, um, and working with uh, the Coursera platform, which is um, through resources at Yale, a collaboration between Yale and Coursera. Many of you might be familiar with the Coursera platform. We, we rolled out the, a pretty similar course to review the evidence for the midwifery model of care and combine with that advocacy and experience and action for, um, for local, national, and regional level uh, work and to really bring forth the evidence for the role of midwifery and health system strengthening, especially now, it's actually very topical. The course has been delayed. It was supposed to be out by this time, but it was delayed by the coronavirus um, complications that we've encountered. But that's exactly one of the um, points that we were hoping to make, that in this time of climate change and changing disease patterns and massive human migration, um, that health system strengthening, especially um, in, in, in maternity care, is really, really more vital and important than ever, especially if we hope to accelerate progress toward the SDG goals. Um, and at the same time, really bringing forward evidence um, about the foundational parts of midwifery practice of preserving and protecting normal physiologic processes and um, being grounded in respectful and patient-centered care. Um, let me just advance this up. So the, the course under, develop right now, uh, under development right now is an eight module course. One of the exciting aspects about Coursera is that it's um, free and open access for anyone in any setting. Um, it's easy to connect to and it can be completely free. If a participant wants to um, gain a Yale Coursera certificate, it costs $49, which also is um, not an exorbitant fee. So it, it feels exciting to be involved in um, providing that um, really open access kind of um, opportunity for people who are interested in this field. And I think one of the most exciting um, elements of the course right now is that it's not just me and Michelle who are teaching it. We have, I think, 14 um, different collaborators who are leading experts in the field. They're leading clinicians, contributors to the Lancet series. They work in different environments in low, middle, and high income countries. Um, so it really has turned into an opportunity to bring together all these really um, outstanding thinkers and movers in the field of maternal and newborn care. And it's really designed around the structure that um, was presented in 2014 by Renfrew et al, um, the quality maternal and newborn care framework. And so this is um, sort of the outline I, I'm sorry, I apologize, the numbering system is off here, but um, so eight modules altogether. The first grounds us in the status of maternal mortality and newborn survival and stillbirth, um, kind of the state of the world today. And the second module really goes deeper into what's a midwife, what's a midwifery model of care, and kind of introducing the need for and the process of developing the quality and maternal and newborn care framework. Then the next five modules um, go further into those five components of the QMNC framework, practice categories, organization of care, values, philosophy, and care providers. And the final um, module is really hearing from people, activists, and people working um, in policy and advocacy um, for the midwifery model of care. And I just wanted to show a, a little bit larger blown up um, 
view here of the QMNC framework. This is a kind of novel application of the QMNC framework to structure this course around this, but I think it really speaks to the strength and the um, applicability of the framework be, uh, to use this compre comprehensive view that the framework has developed. Um, so student expectations for the courses. Um, if, if people are interested in getting the certificate, they need to pass short quizzes. They are asked to post commentary. Coursera actually has the capacity to um, sort of have interactive engagement. If there's a, a, enough um, participants in the course, you can post things and get responses. So you, it, it can actually develop into a more real-time dialogue, even though everyone is doing self-study at their own pace. And so that pace could be probably a person could get through it in a week um, of, of more intensive study, or they can take their time and do it in eight weeks, um, you know, or, or any amount of time that they want in order to finish it. But baseline is they need to uh, show that, that they have understanding of the material covered and have, have engaged with it. Um, and in terms of distribution, um, the strength of the Coursera platform is that they have th over 30 million discrete users. Michelle and I are really hoping that there are 30 million people out there who are massively interested in the midwifery model of care, but we'll be happy to get a smaller number. Um, we are also advertising through professional organizations and the networks of the amazing contributors that we have, as well as um, Yale. We rely on several Yale faculty from the School of Business, actually, the School of Public Health and the School of Nursing, uh, from the School of Medicine as well. So there's um, a fair number of Yale faculty involved. And we will also provide uh, continuing education credits. I think it could be used even for um, a course at various um, university courses as a special um, global matern maternal and newborn care course. Um, we have the opportunity then to do as val evaluation as well, not just enroll the number of people who enroll and the course ratings, but really I think even more interesting are who are the people taking the course and what are they interested in? Is this useful to them? What is their preferred um, content and what other content would, would be of interest to them? Um, so that we can continue to refine the course as we go along and, and be responsive to that, or also as a guide to um, developing other course material. So some of the challenges, however, um, and it has been a bit challenging, um, it's very labor and cost um, intensive for the initial development of a course like this. Um, and it was a pretty steep learning curve for Michelle and for me, um, given that online learning, the research around online learning um, shows that women or shows that people actually um, learn in a different way than they do in a classroom environment. So it tends to be, you know, shorter videos with really condensed information and then a moment to take a quiz or have a reflection or do a reading and then another um, a seven to 10 minute um, video from, uh, you know, another perspective or another short lesson. So it's been a steep learning curve to organize all of that. Um, and it would have been very, very difficult without the technical assistance from the Purvu uh, Center for Teaching and Learning at Yale. Um, they've provided all that um, we need to film people, to make sure that the audio is okay, to do the editing, um, to let us know the capacity of the Coursera platform. Um, so it's been an exciting challenge to work on that. Um, and some of the highlights, it's really been, um, you know, supported and exciting um, vision from the Dean and from the School of Nursing um, at Yale um, and supported the, with, with key funding um, support. Um, like I said, university resources were really important to support this development. Um, and then the great thing is that once we get this up and running, actually the continued faculty investment or the continued investment in the course is very low because Coursera takes over on maintaining um, the student enrollment and um, you know sending out certificates and all of that. So actually it becomes really self-sustaining after the initial development. 
we have the opportunity, as I said, to um, update it as needed, or every few years it will be updated, and we can be responsive to um, learner needs and change it as it goes forward even. So our future plans around the course are just to try to um, evaluate the impact longitudinally. We'd really like to see not just, as I said, like who's using this, but um, how does it affect their um, care and their practice and have they been able to implement change in their local environments. Um, we hope that this can be um, an exciting opportunity for developing other courses with a global um, perspective. Um, I think that we have such power when we can communicate to uh, each other with each other. And I think, as Michelle said, we're overnight kind of getting a lot better about that. So um, it feels like just all part of that same flow right now. Um, and we hope, you know, ultimately to really foster a more global dialogue around quality maternal and newborn care. Um, I just want to make reference briefly to um, another initiative of Holly Kennedy, who um, is taking the lead on this, on many of these initiatives. She has just recently um, posted and, and launched the Quality Maternal and Newborn Care website um, at www.qmnc.org. Um, this will be an ongoing portal for midwifery education at Yale, um, but and it will also be a, a portal for this course. It is also um, a meeting place for uh, researchers who are interested in um, quality maternal and newborn care. And I think in the first week of launching the program, I think, or the website, I think it's now in its second or third week, in the first week, over 200 researchers or, and people who are interested in information registered at the site. Um, and so it will really be a place where people can meet up and can collaborate and get up-to-date information. So it's a very exciting new um, element of the um, Yale midwifery world and also um, a portal, as I said, to, to this course. Um, and again, just the mission of the, the website is fostering research information and community. So just to sum it up, um, we're looking forward, I think, to your feedback, whether this is um, a course that you would be interested in, whether you have done similar work, um, whether you've had similar exp experiences in reaching out to midwives um, or, or workers in that field um, globally and what your experience is. Um, we had structured this course, I think, to, to meet everybody's need, whether you're a person out there asking what's a midwife, um, you're sort of at that level, or you're a person who's um, deeply into um, advocating for midwifery and the midwifery model of care, we hope to provide the evidence needed to support your, your action and the information that you need. So um, that's all that we have for now, and we'd love to hear your questions and feedback. So there's a question from Emily. The pilot included a six week in country immersion. Will this be available for those engaging in the MOOC? So yeah, that won't be um, for those in the MOOC. Um, that was sort of a part of a pilot. I mean, it, eventually that was somewhat of a dream of ours to be able to reproduce that birth center setting. Um, but it's such an individualized thing to replicate and we're not even Sure, we're able to do that yet, but um, we had the Macquarie students did go up this spring um, to the birth center, so they did start to learn in that model, uh, but that got cut short due to Corona. But for this online course, it's just going to be, um, yeah, instructional only, kind of an online learning. It's not a clinical course. And um, Daisy, thanks for your question. The the name will be Quality Maternal and Newborn Care. Glo I'm sorry, Global Quality Maternal and Newborn Care. Yeah, we were hoping um, to have the course launched by now, but unfortunately with Corona hit um, and the team that usually helps us make this had to take a break um, to help the university put all their classes online. So it's a little bit delayed. We're hoping maybe by the end of the summer.
and VI VIDM would love to um, share your links uh, on all our channels too. Yeah, wonderful. Does any? I'm just interested in if anyone in the audience has had any similar sort of experience with a class um, designed to reach a global audience. Well, I hope it'll be unique and exciting in that case. <laughs> I hope we'll, we'll draw you all in. And really, um, you know, I, I, I want to emphasize the contributors who have um, participated are um, really outstanding. So tune in to hear from uh, the experts and leaders in the field. Um, it's currently available in English, um, and uh, if there's if there's interest, um, Yale has the capacity to uh, provide. We do have a one Spanish speaking contributor, I believe, um, but Yale does have the capacity to provide in, uh, translation down the road if that becomes something that um, people are interested in. Yeah, uh, we we agree. I mean. Um, uh, connectivity and bandwidth was really a challenge. I think that um, Coursera is an easier platform to for people to um, engage with. Yeah, I think one of the benefits of Coursera is that you're able to, if you do have connectivity, you can download all the modules kind of at one time and work offline and then re-upload once you get back into connect to a connection. Um, so it's a little bit easier than the platform we were working on. I think as Michelle mentioned, we were all dearly attached to the synchronous learning, learning sessions that we um, had with all of our students in the US and Rwanda and Uganda, especially the initial session had everyone in the course all together, including the six faculty and the 16 students. and. Um, it was really exciting to see people's faces, but the synchronous learning sessions were very, very challenging, and there were several times when not everyone could connect. Interested in BlueJeans app? I haven't heard that. Does it work well? Yeah, it's very good uh, for low bandwidth settings, and um, this is Jane again, the facilitator. You'll probably realize now why none of us use webcams in this platform because um, we can't connect so many people if we're all in the West with the high resource to countries using up all the bandwidth, then our, our partners in other countries can't get, even get on the platform. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it, it um, in response to your comment about using um, in a midwifery program, um, I hope that you will check it out and see if it's appropriate for your needs. Um, we found in our um, in our master's prepared students, as well as those in Uganda and Rwanda, that it was content um, that they felt they hadn't gotten and a, a kind of bigger theoretical um, perspective and that was reinforced by research that they hadn't gotten previously. So we're hoping that it will kind of fill a particular um, niche that, that isn't a standard part of the midwifery curriculum. And I think we're hoping with this course too to really reach people that aren't midwives and maybe it's physicians or maybe it's policymakers or someone in government to really get this model out there because even though it's midwifery model of care, it's so applicable in, in so many settings. And we know that this evidence works and to reach the SDGs, we need to get this implemented. And so we're hoping that this um, kind of more of a broader application of it will kind of get get community activists and other people that maybe aren't, um, aren't midwives uh, to really kind of see what this model is and why it works. Well, I think I think we're all so inspired um, with um, your presentation. I think we're all 
really looking forward to the course um, in Coursera. So um, thank you again, Dr. Tell from Dr. Komalik. We really, really enjoyed your presentation. Thank you for bringing all this information and we'll make sure uh, when we get your links that we push it out on our channels as well, because it's really, really an important concept. And oh, sorry, here's your references. Sorry, I forgot you had references here.